I can guarantee you that you will be expected to interpret various charts and graphs in one of your upcoming consulting case interviews. This video will cover the 10 types of charts and graphs you should know. This video comes from the Hacking the Case Interview online course, which teaches you how to solve case interviews in the most efficient way possible. If you find this video helpful, make sure to try out the course for free. We'll start off with the most basic chart, a simple bar chart. When interpreting charts, always talk through what the axes are first. Here, the x-axis represents different products. We have desktops, laptops, and tablets. The y-axis represents sales and dollars. Therefore, the height of each of these bars represents the amount of sales for each product. Fairly straightforward. We can conclude here that laptops have the highest sales at $5,000, and tablets have the lowest sales at $1,500,000. We can add another dimension of data with a stacked bar chart. Again, let's start by talking through what the axes are. The x-axis represents different companies. We have us, rival A, and rival B. The y-axis once again represents sales in dollars. The stacked bars here are color-coded in dark blue, blue, and light blue to represent the different products. Therefore, this stacked bar chart shows us the sales of different products by company. We can conclude here that Rival A has the highest sales for desktops, laptops, and tablets. We can transform the previous stacked bar into a 100% stacked bar. Instead of the y-axis being sales in dollars, the y-axis is now sales as a percentage of total sales for that company. The x-axis still represents the company, and the dark blue, blue, and light blue segments still represent products. The advantage of a 100% stacked bar is that you can easily compare the relative proportion of sales of one product among companies. So here, we can conclude that Rival A has the highest proportion of sales coming from desktops since the bottom light blue segment is the largest compared to the other company. Rival B has the highest proportion of sales coming from tablets since the top dark blue bar is the largest among the three companies. The next chart is called the Merimeco or Meco chart. It adds yet another dimension of data and can be a bit confusing for those that have never seen it before. Once again, the x-axis represents the different companies. The y-axis represents the percentage of total sales for that company. And the segments color-coded in dark blue, blue, and light blue represent the different products. The additional dimension of data here is the width of the x-axis which shows how large total sales are for us versus rival A versus rival B. You can think of this as a large rectangular pie chart. The entire area of the full rectangle represents $24,500 of sales, or the sum of total sales from us, rival A, and rival B. Each individual rectangle represents the percentage of the total $24,500 in sales. For example, we know that our sales of desktops are $2,000. Therefore, the size of our light blue desktop rectangle will be about 8%, or $2,000 divided by the total $24,500. Remember that our sales were $8,500, rival A's sales were $14,000, and rival B's sales were $2,000. The width of the x-axis for each company represents this. Rival A sales are $14,000, which is more than half of the total $24,500 of sales. This is why the width of Rival A's product segments is about 60% of the width of the full rectangle. We can still make the same conclusions as the 100% stacked bar by seeing the proportion of sales each product accounts for by company. Our next chart is the pie chart. This one should look very simple compared to the MECO chart we just covered. The pie chart in this case represents 100% of our total sales, and each slice represents the proportion of our total sales each product accounts for. You'll notice that the pie chart provides the exact same information as a 100% stacked bar chart. The next chart is the waterfall chart. The waterfall chart shows or reconciles how we get from one number to another number. This chart shows how we get from year one profit, 
which is the gray bar on the far left, to year two profit, the gray bar on the far right. At first glance, we can see that profit has increased from year one to year two. What caused this increase? The bars in light blue show drivers that increase profits. For example, there was a price increase, a quantity increase, and a decrease in variable costs. The bar in dark blue shows what drivers decrease profits. In this case, that was an increase in fixed costs. Collectively, all of these drivers result in a net increase in profits. We can conclude from this chart that the largest driver of the increase in profit is from a quantity increase, since that is the largest light blue bar. We move on to our next chart, the histogram. A histogram may look like a bar chart, but it is actually quite different. A histogram shows the distribution of a variable while a bar chart compares variables. In this histogram, the x-axis represents different age groups. We have 0 to 20 year olds, 21 to 40 year olds, 41 to 60 year olds, and etc. The y-axis shows the frequency of these age groups. From this histogram, we see that there are very few people that are 81 years and older. They only have a frequency of about 5,000. The 21 to 40 year old age group, on the other hand, has the highest frequency with 35,000. The next common graph is a line graph. It simply shows a change in one variable over time. Time is almost always on the x-axis for line graphs. The y-axis here shows annual revenue. Therefore, this line graph shows how annual revenue has changed from year one to year five. A scatter plot shows dots to visualize the values of two different variables. These two variables are labeled on the x-axis and y-axis. In this example, the x-axis represents annual growth in supply chain investments, while the y-axis shows annual revenue growth. If we look for patterns among the many dots, it appears that as annual growth in supply chain investment increases, annual revenue growth increases as well. We can add a trend line to the scatter plot to show this trend or correlation. Therefore, if a company has 10% annual growth in supply chain investments, we can predict that their annual revenue growth will be greater than 20%. The final chart we'll be looking at is the bubble chart. Bubble charts use the x-axis, y-axis, the size of the bubble, and even the color of the bubble to show many dimensions of information. In this example, each bubble represents a different drug. The x-axis shows drug efficacy, the y-axis shows drug mortality rate, and the size of the bubbles shows sales of that drugs in dollars. The color of the bubble indicates whether the drug belongs to our company or a competitor. With bubble charts, you typically may want to identify which quadrant of the chart is the best or most favorable quadrant. In this case, Drugs with high efficacy rates and low mortality rates are generally the best. So, looking at the quadrant at the bottom right, we see that drugs in this segment have the highest sales, which makes sense. Additionally, we can see that our company has two drugs in this quadrant, while the competitor only has one. But, the competitor has the drug that has the highest amount of sales. This is probably due to the fact that their drug has a very low mortality rate, but very high efficacy. Now that we have covered all the charts and graphs you'll need to be familiar with, we'll move on to doing practice problems solving a variety of different quantitative problems.